Hello, welcome. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum, and in this video, I'm gonna be recreating myself, but virtually, kinda. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird to think about it, but that is kind of what's gonna happen. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's just get into it. So, first and foremost, what I'm using right now is the latest version of Blender 2.9 something, I think. And you can download it for free. I'll put a link into the description box. Um, and I'll also put a link to the description box where you can download the actual plugin for the face builder. Um, there's a little bit of a process of kind of getting that installed into your Blender. Um, but as soon as you have it, it's going to be easy. So, um... Face Builder 2.1, just go into the description and there will be probably like a link to a YouTube video on how to install it properly. Um, but as soon as you have that, then you can kind of go on ahead and, um, you know, see that there will be like a different 3D face model created. This is kind of a basic template. You don't have to select whether you are like a female or a male that you're trying to recreate a body of. It will just work the same on both. Um, and I was kind of weirded out by that, but you will kind of get to know the human facial structure doing this process. But it's kind of, it's still interesting to kind of see how it gets done. So um, for me, I've made a bunch of pictures of myself already. So um, I saved that to my desktop. And um, as soon as you kind of clicked on a picture, you can then kind of see my current appearance then on your screen right now. So as soon as you have a picture of yourself or somebody that you're trying to recreate a model of, you can just select a point on the actual model and drag it to the place on the virtual one that you kind of needed to, that you need to reproduce. So that is basically like the first thing that you have to do. So the rest of this whole process is just basically matching it up as, as good as you can with all of these images from the different angles. So I'm going to take you through this one and then the next and then I'm going to just speed run through all of them um, because otherwise it can ju just get a little bit time consuming on my part. So um, usually I start off with the nose because it's a good center point to kind of gauge also the scale of everything and then the inner part of the eye because then it's just kind of locating where all of these different points are. And then I usually take like a corner of the mouth or something. And then you can already see that you can kind of get a little bit of already a vision of what it's going to look like. My face apparently is way wider than this person's is. So it's still a little bit, it needs some adjustment. But then you'll kind of slowly see that it is starting to follow the original shapes of my own face. So um, you can get into some more detail. And my sister will probably hate the fact that I haven't shaved to do this video, but... I, I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> it's just the purpose of this video right now. So, um, yeah. So I'm just kind of gradually drag all of these points into their position. And it's kind of weird to see my own face on the screen like that. I have to be honest. But So another thing that I would mention is that you shouldn't really put too many points on uh, a face model to begin with. It's kind of good to have a rough model of, on the locations of everything, how it is right now and then kind of refine it as you go along. So I'm gonna just take the second one and this is then from a different angle. And then you can already see that you would need to put it into perspective a little bit more. So it is just kind of putting these points on the actual locations where they need to be. It's a crazy process. I don't know, I really get weirded out just watching this. And uh, let's see. Maybe like my eyebrows a little bit more down on this one. So um, basically once you have this done right now, then you can kind of already see it taking shape. I don't know if you can see somewhat of a resemblance. I don't know if I can already see somewhat of a resemblance, but this is without the texture of your actual skin, it will kind of never really look as good as it would with the color. So as soon as we get into that process, it will look a lot more like me, I hope, but I'm just trying to showcase it. So um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just go through all these pictures, put like about six to seven, let's say between six and 10 of these dots on these individual control points of my face. And then I'm gonna just go through the next picture. And then once I've done all of them, I'm gonna see if, if that needs still need some tweaking to get it like really refined. But this is basically the process that I'm following. Um, throughout this whole design thing.
So um, now that my face is kind of next to it, I hope you can kind of see the resemblance. Um, I do have to fix a little bit of the texturing around the eyes, especially. There we go. So it kind of unfolds my, my face into like this pancake, like flat out in a way. So I can take this image and take it back to uh, Photoshop and then literally just, or I can even do it in here with um, just the painting tool. Then you can uh, like, you know, take a paint sample out of this region and kind of project it over it. It's not matching it too well right now. Um, let's see, I can also do like the clone. So right here, I can kind of smear all of these things out of here, these imperfections. And that way I can kind of blend these textures in and then on my face it will probably it's kind of already a little bit fixed not like all the way but you can kind of you know take this and use it to kind of blend those things out but as you can see it kind of also messes with the texture of your face because like kind of my imperfections in my skin like little dimples and stuff those will kind of be within uh, that model still so here you can kind of see as if it is still has a height with the actual dimples that I have in my face so um just things like that you can just alter a lot of those things to make it a little bit perfect um, um but either way you can just kind of manipulate it and play with it in that way to get it really the way you want it to be um but for me this is kind of now already good to kind of work off of and i can still do certain things here and there so um what i can do from here is basically go back into this modeling mode um i can then use the um weight painting so this is kind of what i will do to generate a hair group on my entire face and i need to do it for this fussy stuff right here and also on the top of my head so um basically what i need to do is to draw a circle out that is just my entire hairline everywhere um and kind of yeah just use a little bit of i can see it a little bit in my face and i kind of have a good knowledge about how my face is molded um so yeah gonna go all the way below i'm gonna fill everything in later but i'm gonna just do the details around the edges and stuff right now um this is so weird to do this stuff on your own face i don't know like if you could imagine but it's fun though And I can act as if I have a little bit better beard growth already. So let's just make sure that everything is connected. <laughs> So, and now that we kind of got my whole shape of my head kind of pattern out where hair is kind of supposed to come out, um, we can then kind of save this as a vertex group and then go to your particle system while your face is kind of selected. So, I'm going to exit the weight painter and um, at the particle, uh, your par particle properties tab, you can then make a new one and then you will kind of see this one a mirror type thing here and then you will select hair. So, then you will kind of see all of these hair fibers come out of your skull but you can also see that they're kind of according to the color where they're coming from so um what we can do now is select the vertex groups and then select hair that we just made and then you can kind of see that there are only hair particles now exiting from the sections where we selected that hair is supposed to come out so you see it like on the face like these hairs coming out and also on the skull it's it's crazy but it's gonna get even crazier so um here we can kind of go to the children and then you select inter I don't I can't pronounce pronounce the word inter interpolated and then um you know you'll kind of get a more over exaggerated view of what the hair is going to look like so um that kind of becomes a super afro type of lion mane thing so I can kind of change the length already so that I'll already kind of show you like how tall it is and I'm just going to make it for the beard for first um because i can then kind of also add length afterwards to this section right here so um already i think the material for it is gonna be um just black i'm just gonna you know kind of give it a color instead of letting it come from the color of the actual skin so then i would need to make another material new and just make it black 
and then go back to the emitter so now we got just black hair um, and then what I can do is actually brush it so um, I need to decide if I need to do that already let's do it we can just figure it out later So if you then go to the particle system, you can then have like your own comb. So then I can kind of literally brush these hairs out and kind of make them fall and everything. So this is um, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's it's fun. So um, for the top right here, um, we can then also kind of add length to them. So then you can select length here and uh, I need to kind of make it longer in this section in general and then Kind of because my hair is kind of shorter on the sides and this big mess on the top so um let's see So then we basically have something like that and then we can kind of trim everything off. Um, so from the sides right here. Who's out here giving themselves a virtual fade? Come on. And um, I can then kind of leave it as it is right now. So, so <laughs> this is... Um, I need to send this to my sister ASAP. Wait. Um... <laughs> Yo, <laughs> oh shit, um, yeah, uh, save, <laughs> okay, wait, I'm gonna send it to her, um, also what I can do that is fun is the actual animating side of things, so if I can now go to animation, um, you can then also go to the render view, and then if I then press play, if, I also put the hair in dynamic. Yes, hair is in dynamic. And if I press play, you can, can actually see it falling down. Um, so if I then go back to modeling, um, let's see if we can actually like do some stuff to the hair and kind of make it look as if it is a little bit more realistic to what I got right now. Um, I actually just need to make it like curl more, I think. I have no clue what all of these things do to it, but I think we're just gonna try some and figure out what happens as we go. Um, is it in the animation side? Um, yeah, it is on zero. Or should I put it on frame one? I think it was on frame one. Um, okay, this is also way too funny. Um, I'm done. <laughs> um, I wish I could add like more of a curl type effect to it because that would be just a little bit more realistic to my face, but I'm satisfied. I'm good. So um, this is going to be the character for my video game. Um, <laughs> this shit is too fun. Um, I'm going to start editing this video. In the next one, I'm going to actually also attach a body to it. Um, I'm going to see you guys then. I love this shit. Bye.